Welcome to Regina Decor Camelli, Educating for Eternity. I'm your host, Robert Milan, and I welcome you to my channel. If you haven't done so already, I welcome you to subscribe, to like, share and comment on our videos, and don't forget the notification button. And please, I welcome you to go and look at the previous episodes, especially in this series on Catholic prophecies, prophecies for our times, to help you to understand the entire framework that we're trying to deliver in these messages of prophecy for Catholic times. We're going to look at two further mystics, a modern day, if you like, mystics, Marie Julie Jahani and Blessed Sister Elena Aiello. Now, these two mystics, you may have not heard of them. They, the Sister Elena um, died in 1961 and uh, um Julie, Mary Julie Jahani was also a mystic in the late uh, 1800s and early 1900s. Now, I want you to also take note when we do go through these mystics that the messages correlate to Our Lady uh, of, La, uh, of La Salette. Now, Our Lady and Lord show their countenance towards that people have not listened to the messages of the children at La Salette. So let's have a look at the, the next mystic, which is Marie-Julie Jahani, who was born in France in 1850 and died in 1941. Soon after her 23rd birthday, Julie, Marie-Julie Jahani received the, the stigmata on February 1873 where she fell seriously ill and the Virgin Mary repeated to her, telling her that she would have to suffer very much. Apart from the three days of darkness which she had prophesied, um, we will also return to this at a, the last episode in the series on the three days of darkness. Marie Julie Jahani also gave the following prophecies, prophecy which had occurred. The prophecy of the Bismarck Kultukampf, which was the war in Germany against waged against Catholics. Also that there would be religious persecutions which would be caused by Freemasons. Also that the departure and exile of religious congregations and the separation of church and state and that military service will be imposed on religious also, the su- suppression of crucifixes in hospitals, in courtrooms and teaching establishments. Creation of atheistic schools, iniquity, irreligion, revolution and anti-patriotism. She stated, By all that is most corrupt and dirty will be instructed in blasphemous, blasphemous religion. In a blasphemous religion. The mortal creature would be made to adore all that is most infamous and ignoble and indecently presented. Well, don't we see it today? Humanity has forced to accept these iniquitous laws of gay marriage and and the like, abortions, the right of a woman to kill her child and many other iniquitous laws in our society. On the 5th of September in 1881, she prophesied the death of Melanie Calvert of La Salette, and which would take place 23 years later on the 15th of December in 1904. She also prophesied the death of Pope Leo XIII and also the future Pope, quote, the Adriatic Cardinal is chosen by God. His reign will be that of Christ. He will not last very long and will be called pious. She also prophesied World War I in 1914 and World War II in 1939. In relation to the message that was sent from heaven and also in relation to La Salette, in 1846, our Lord says the following, quote, on the 4th of January in 1884, I have done everything for my people. I sent my mother on earth. Very few believed in her words. My voice 
was heard everywhere through the victims I myself had chosen and on whom I worked marvels and prodigies. They were despised and persecuted. On the anniversary of the apparitions of La Salette, on 19th of September 1901, Our Lady says the following, quote, Today my eyes still have a trace of the tears that I shed on that day, meaning the day at La Salette, when I wanted to bring my children the good news if they converted, but sad news if they continued with their iniquities. They take little notice of what I revealed. How true a word spoken by the Blessed Mother. Now is the time that these great promises will be accomplished that the church authorities have despised. They did not want the light. I have suffered a great deal for all this. Pain oppresses my heart at this moment. The most painful sword right now is to see the provisions that have been taken and that are in the making. It is to see the pastors detaching themselves from the sacred bond that directs and governs the Holy Church. My children, when I remember the day I brought my warnings to the Holy Mountain, that being of La Salette, to the threatened world, when I remember the harsh reception of my words, not by all but many, and those who should have made them known to the souls, hearts, spirits of children with great confidence, deep penetration, they took no notice. They despised them and most of them refused their confidence. I mean, not trusting in the words of Our Lady is, is a recipe for disaster. In other words, Our Lady was ignored. Heaven was ignored and the messages were despised. On the 14th of August, on the 4th of August in 1904, other pastors rebelled and the message was put back under seas, whereas it should have been delivered to the world. It was because pastors and the priesthood was the great issue that there was a rebellion. How do you expect punishments not to fall on the world? They go so far as to make my words disappear and to cause suffering to the ones I devoted to this holy cause. I will reward my good pastors, my servants. In addition to the discontent with the lack of notice of the messages of La Salette from our Mother and our Lord, heaven to continue to show Marie Julie Jahani by revealing the following profanation of the holy species of the sacrament, the role and temporary triumph of Freemasonry consistent with Our Lady of Good Success in the 1600s, the secularized priest. All these enemies want churches to become theatres of infernal dance. Did you hear that? Infernal dances. And will continue to implacably their aim to obtain the cessation of the Holy Mass. In other words, the Mass, there are those planning to obliterate the Mass. And this is prophesied by Our Lady. Removal of all crucifix and statues of the saints from all the shrines and throw them into profane place to break them with joy. Some of our churches look like a Protestant hall. Atrocious. The holy ministry will be covered in shame. Well, we see that. We see that, don't we, with all the sexual scandals uh, uh, directed to, to children and the like. The holy ministry will be covered with shame and undercover grumbling reigns in the hearts of many priests against the bond of faith, the Pope. In other words, many would not listen to the church, not listen to what's been passed down. Enemies of the church would penetrate into her bosom and 
perpetrate horrible scandals and thrust the sword into the heart of the church. This is what we, Our Lady is foretelling about infiltrations in the church. She also had a vision of a dialogue between our Lord and Lucifer, where Lucifer states the following, quote, I will attack the church. I will overthrow the cross. I will decimate the people. I will deposit a great weakness of faith in hearts. There will also be a great denial of religion. For a time, I will be master of all things. Everything will be under my control even your temple and all your people. Well, you only have to look so far. Where some churches, some places uh, worship, the people denying religion, the rate of religion is, is declining, the rate of atheism is increasing right throughout the world. Marie also uh, saw that there will not remain any vestige of the holy sacrifice, no apparent trace of faith, confusion will be everywhere. St. Michael says that Satan will have possession of everything for some time and that he will reign completely over everything that all goodness, faith, religion will be buried in the tomb. Satan and his own will triumph with joy. But after this triumph, the Lord will in his turn gather his own people and will reign and triumph over evil and will raise up from the tomb the buried church, the prostrated cross. There is no doubt, there is no doubt that God will always win in the end. And finally, there will not remain any vestige of the holy sacrifice, no apparent trace of faith. Confusion will be everywhere. It is truly a dire warning. There is hope. All these messages presented to us from from 1600s through Our Lady of Good Success about a holy prelate, that there is hope. Hope will come. Our Lady of uh, Fatima tells us that um, the triumph will happen. Her Immaculate Heart will triumph in the end. We're not saying that there is no hope, but the, the concern is here of the soul's the souls that unfortunately will be lost, and we'll see this in this coming prophecy given to Blessed Elena Aiello. And this comes to our final mystic in the series, which you may or may not have heard of, and that's Blessed Elena Aiello, who was both a mystic and a stigmatist. She was also a victim soul, which means that she suffered for, for those around her, for the future, for future atrocities that would be committed against the, the, the God. Um, she also founded the Minim Tertiaries of the Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ. In 1940, Jesus asked Blessed Elena to deliver a message to Benito Mussolini, telling him and warning him not to join forces with Hitler in World War II. He ignored the warning and the divine punishment would fall upon him, and this came to be a dire warning indeed, but you know, people just do not listen to heaven. They do not listen to heaven. Some of her notable messages um, from the, the Blessed Virgin Mary to Sister Elena include, people are offending God too much. Were I to show you all the sins committed on a single day, you would surely die of grief. There are grave; These are grave times. All is hanging on a slender thread. When that thread will, shall snap, divine justice shall pounce upon the world and execute its dreadful purging design. All the nations shall be punished because sins like a muddy river are now covering all the earth. I don't need to speak any further of that. We can see it everywhere. You can see sin everywhere, abortions, homosexuality, sodomy, impurities, and I, I could go on forever and ever. People compromising many things for the sake of their own well-being and many other things. 
She goes on to say, the power of evil are getting ready to strike furiously in every part of the globe. Tragic events are in store for the future. And for quite a while, and in many a way, I have warned the world. And Our Lady has warned us many, many, many times about these events. And we've talked about them in the last few episodes, including this one. The nation's rulers do indeed understand the gravity of these dangers, but they refuse to acknowledge that it is necessary for all people to practice a truly Christian life to counteract the scourge. The, the leaders in our world know that Christianity, but they refuse to acknowledge Christianity. In fact, it's quite the opposite. They are trying to destroy Christianity. Look through the, the pandemic. Churches were the first to fold. They considered non-essential, both all around the world, everywhere. We were without receiving and hearing Mass for such a long time. Christianity is being demised by leaders and governments are taken over through an atheistic agenda going forward. Remember, we go back to the the, the early centuries of the those philosophers who wanted to promote a separation of church and state and that the religion should not be, no one should be under the, 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 the thumb of a religion. Look what the, the governments are doing to us. Oh, what torture I feel in my heart on beholding mankind so engrossed in all kinds of things and completely ignoring the most important duty of their reconciliation with God. Mankind does not want to change. In fact, they, they, they pride in their sin. Look at the various um, parades that we have around the world of people sodomizing their behavior in a way and showing it off as being something that to be proud of and also to be uh, rejoiced in and not oh, it's so funny, it's so great. No, it's not. It's atrocious, it's disgusting, and it mocks God. Look at all the profane laws that we have around abortion, a woman's right to kill a baby. What a, what a what horrendous thought. And sodomite marriage and many other things that we can think of that happen in our world. The time is not far off now when the whole world shall be greatly disturbed. A great deal of blood of just and innocent people, as well as saintly priests, will be poured out. The church shall suffer very much, and hatred will be at its very peak. Many iniquities and wicked leaders of the people who live and drag along with them their people outside the laws of God, showing themselves in sheep's clothing while being a rapacious wolves, have ruined society, stirring up against God and his church. So people who pretending to be wonders and doing wonders and wonderful in bringing people will themselves be sheep but wolves in sheep's clothing and we see that very much so today um, and we, we, are, we are warned by our blessed mother through sister Elena on the feast of the immaculate heart of our lady being the 22nd of August 1960 our lady says to blessed Elena Tremendous scourges are impending over the world and various nations struck by epidemics, famines, great earthquakes, terrific hurricanes with overflowing rivers and seas which bring ruin and death. You want to talk about climate change? Well, yes, you're right. Humans have caused climate change. It is through their evil sins that heaven has allowed these atrocities of nature to rise against humanity and we believe that it's in in climate change but this is definitely climate change but on a different level if the people do not recognize in these scourges of nature there you go a warning from nature of the divine mercy so this is a merciful a warning is a merciful warning and do not return to god with truly christian living another terrible war will come from the east to the west Russia, with her secret armies, will battle America and will overrun Europe. 
Now, these could be in the form of uh, infiltrations, could be in the form of Russia's spreading her errors that Our Lady warned us at Fatima. It may not necessarily be a physical war, but some sort of infiltration around America and around Europe, which we see quite very much so in, uh, in our world today. These messages of and warnings that are given to Blessed Elena appear to be consistent and reinforce the importance of the consecration of Russia and that Russia, with her secret armies, will battle America and overrun Europe. Our Lady's words from Fatima ring true. Russia will spread her errors should the consecration not take place. In a well-known apparition, Our Lady of Akita in Japan occurred in 1973 to a very devout nun, Sister Agnes Sasagawa, on August the 3rd, 1973. We're going to take a look at it, and I want you to also think about the date, the 13th of October, 1973, and the last apparition, Miracle of the Sun at Fatima, in 1917, on 13th of October. It's almost like a continuation of the message of Fatima. After all, it is from the same source. Our Lady of Akita, Our Lady says to Sister Agnes, Many men in this world afflict the Lord. I desire souls to console him, to soften the anger of my of the Heavenly Father. I wish with my son for souls who will repair by their suffering and their poverty for the sinners and ingrates. In order that the world might know his anger, the Heavenly Father is preparing to inflict a great chastisement on all mankind. With my son I have intervened so many times to appease the wrath of, of the Father. It's, it's interesting in this message that we see that our time is is either up or almost up because in there it's not not so, so much as a warning it's more that it's it's without a doubt ready to go our Lord God is ready to act it's imminent in other words it's imminent and so but she's asking for sister Agnes and her community to um, which we'll see in the next message. I prevented the coming of calamities by offering him the sufferings of the Son on the cross, his precious blood, and beloved souls who console him, forming a cohort of victim souls. We mentioned victim souls right throughout this whole series of prophecies. Prayer, penance, and courageous sacrifice can soften the Father's anger. I, de- I desire this also from your community, that is a community of nuns, that it, that it love poverty that it sanctify itself and pray in reparation for the ingratitude and outrage of so many men. Then on October the 13th, 1973, we see a dire warning. Remember the date, October the 13th, 1973. Our Lady gives Sister Agnes on the same day, on the same anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima, on the 13th of October, 1917, which was the miracle of the sun. Quote, As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never seen before. The deluge, we're talking about Noah's flood which wiped out the whole world and left eight people on the ark. This is supposed to said to be much, much, much greater. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity. The good as well as the bad, sparing neither priest nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only arms, and I'm very important here to repeat this several times, which is also consistent with Our Lady of Fatima, the only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day recite the prayer of the rosary, prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops and priests. 
the work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinals opposing cardinals, bishops against bishops. I hope you're not living under a rock because we see that today. We see mixed messages from our leaders, mixed messages from our priests. It is concerning, but prophesied by Our Lady. The priests who venerate me will be scorned. So those who want to practice the faith, those who want to pass on the, what our Lord and Our Lady and the Church, the, the, the Church of, of Holy Memory, are being scorned, will be scorned and opposed by their uh, confreres. Churches and altars will be sacked. What does it mean by sacked? Which means they won't, won't look like a church anymore. It will look like a hall, which is consistent with the earlier prophecies we saw of Marie Julie Jahani. The church will be full of those who accept compromise. I say no more. And the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. Well, we know that the since the 1960s onwards, the vocations have been a crisis. The demon will be especially implacable against souls consecrated to God. The thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. Heaven has spoken. Our Lady showed the children a vision of hell. Our Lady says over here that many souls that will be lost is the cause of her sadness. Our Lord says that many will be lost in the scriptures. No, we do not have a reasonable hope that all will be saved. We hope that we'll be saved, but many will be lost. This is the message of Our Lady of La Akita and, and consistent with Fatima and our and scriptures. If sins increase in number and gravity, there will be no part, no longer pardon for them. I'll repeat that. If sins increase in number and gravity, there will be no pardon, no longer pardon for them. Very, very frightening. This is also consistent with um, Alphonsus de Logore, who says the same thing, that there's a limited number of sins. Whilst God is all merciful and power and, and, and forgiving and loving, but God also probably gives us a certain amount, so people, amount of sins so we don't abuse his mercy. So these prophecies for our times, whilst occurring in different centuries, parts of the world and eras all have the same theme, messages and warnings. The message is clear. God will not be mocked. I'll repeat that. God will not be mocked. The Blessed Virgin Mary has delivered many messages and warnings. When are we going to take heed? She's clear. Many aren't listening. And we're in the situation, not out of accident, but out of choice. So we need to pray the rosary, devotion to the to his mother, to our Lord's mother, Immaculate Heart of Mary. Go to confession if you've fallen. We all fall, but go to confession. We've seen that in the 17th century, heaven requested the devotion and the consecration of the Sacred Heart of Jesus for France. And failure to lead and to follow, to comply, led to the French Revolution and led to the king himself having his head guillotined. In the 20th century, we have a devotion request from heaven to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the consecration of Russia. This has not been done according to the formula. If you want to see one of my videos on Our Lady of Fatima and comparing the movie, then uh, you're welcome to see that. Prophecy continues to unfold for the past 400 years and is unfolding before us today. And I want you to pause for a moment 
to reflect on the state of the world. Think of the abortions that happen every single day. Millions and millions of babies being aborted. Euthanasia bills, same-sex marriage, transgender, many sexual sins, impurities, people living in relationships that are unpleasing to God, fornication, the divorced and remarried or, or living together illegally. Pornography. People just going through about their whole life without prayer, without the love of God. The type of dresses, the immodesty that we see and the clothing from both men and women, boys and girls, and, and so on and so forth. Our paths can be changed, but we must cooperate and the choice is ours. But is it too late? That's the question. Which we come to our final episode is the frightening chastisement that could befall the world, which has been spoken about by St. Padre Pio and prophesized by some of the mystics we've already examined in the last few episodes. And that is the three days of darkness. So what is the three days of darkness? Is there a precedence in Scripture to three days of darkness? And you'll find all that out in our final episode on that very topic, that chastisement, which is horrific, the three days of darkness. I hope you have the time to tune in, to come in and watch this video. I hope you have the time to tune in to the next episode, our final episode in the series. And I once again welcome you to subscribe to our channel, like, share and comment. And don't forget the notification bell to receive your next video. Thank you, and I'm your host, Robert Malay, and signing off, and God be with you.